Jane Fonda, and this is A&M Studios in Hollywood, California. On the evening of January 28th, along with several other people, I was fortunate to be here and to witness an extraordinary event. 45 of the most remarkable singers in American popular music had come together to record a special song and make a special commitment. For many of us watching that night, part of the thrill was seeing so many diverse artists working together so compatibly, with serious purpose, but with a sense of humor and spontaneous spirit. After all, how often have any of us had a chance to see genuine legends like Ray Charles, Bob Dylan, Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, Diana Ross, Tina Turner, Bruce Springsteen, Willie Nelson, oh, and so many more, all in the same room, sharing harmonies, telling jokes, and even shedding tears. Frankly, it was a bit like a dream. The vision of an artist community coming together, declaring that an urgent common concern was more important to them than musical differences or individual renown. It was a dream too good not to share. A few days before the actual historic session, another musical meeting took place. This time at Lion Share Studios with Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, and Stevie Wonder all present. By the end of the session, it was clear that the song not only had shape and substance, but also had enough heart and soul to inspire the kind of affinity necessary to bind together so many diverse singers. In fact, there was a spirit of cooperation, amiability, and exhilaration born at this session that would eventually carry over to the entire USA for Africa project. Finally, it was the night of Monday, January 28th. Trucks began arriving here at the A&M lot shortly after dark. Over 150 technicians and crew members began assembling a complex audio and video network of equipment. By 8.30, A&M Studios had been transformed into the temporary capital of American popular music. Michael Jackson bypassed the American Music Awards to come in by himself and record one final guide vocal that Quincy could use as a map for the song's chorus parts. Then, a little after 9 p.m., the other singers and their guests began arriving. Many, like Cindy Lauper and Tina Turner and Lionel Richie, were coming straight from the American Music Awards, where Tina and Cindy had performed and Lionel had hosted. People who had been competitors only a few hours before were now meeting as partners in deliverance. Others like Daryl Hall, John Oates, Paul Simon, Billy Joel, and Bruce Springsteen had flown in that same day. I'll be here, I guess that's where they'll leave me stay. When I saw those faces come to the studio that night after the American Music Awards, and they just were checking in one by one, uh, Ray Charles, and just on and on, and I started to feel that everybody was on the case, and they weren't involved, and the egos, and that's one of the key words we had that night, was check your ego at the door. You saw artists that had just met for the evening, hugging each other or comforting each other. I will tell you, though, no one who was intimidated. To walk into their midst and to feel an instant sense of camaraderie, an instant sense of belonging, an instant sense of oneness is a, is a very, very unusual experience. We're going to start out to uh, 
Number one, I'd like to just let, let everybody know that the names down here are for solos. We're going to do the ensembles first and to get all the stacking and all that carpentry out of the way. So if it's too high for anybody, they can just rest on this stack and then we'll come back anyway. and put it away, okay? Yeah. So we'll play, we'll play, we'll make a playback and then we'll start, <laughs> we'll start chopping wood, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now hear it hums? <laughs> Let's put it on the tape. We are the world. <laughs>